okay so uh, in the last lecture we have discussed the limit of the function fx when x tends to c uh, and in that case we have seen many examples where the limit of the function fx does not exist and the reason for this either the function is not defined at the point c means uh, it goes to infinity or minus infinity or maybe it has a different limit along a different path means when you take the right hand side the limit comes out to be different than the left hand side limit okay so then we say the function is does not have a limit for example if you take the function fx as the signum of x we have seen the limit of this function fx uh, signum of x when x tends to 0 does not exist because the reason is very simple when you take the left hand side the limit comes out approach to minus 1 right hand side the limit approach to plus 1 and at the point 0 it is 0. But however, if we consider only the set A over which the limit is taken which is in either in the right hand side of this 0 or maybe the left hand side of the 0 say if I take the c greater than 0 means c infinity interval if I take and then find the limit of the function f x over the interval c infinity where the c is positive then the limit of this function right hand exist because there is no scope for going below of this. Okay. Similarly, when you take minus infinity uh, say c to minus infinity then also the left hand limit exist is it not. So, in such a case though the limit does not exist, but we can say partially partially the limit of the function exists when you approach either from the left hand side or from the right hand side individually limit exists and may be different that is a different matter. Now, in such a case when we define the limit of the function we call it that thing at the left hand limit when you approach the point from the right hand side uh, approach the point uh, from the right hand side then it is called the right hand limit when it goes from the left hand side it the left hand uh, this one uh, goes to here left hand and right hand limit and then we say uh, the if both the limits coincide then only we can say the function has a limit in general otherwise we can also introduce the concept of we will introduce the concept of left hand and right hand limit which we can say is an extension of the limit concepts. So, that is also called one side limits that is one side limit one side date limits. Okay. So, let me see first let a belongs to R and let f is a mapping from A to R then 1 if f is in C if C is in R if C is in R is a crystal point of the set A of the set a intersection c infinity that is the set of those point x where belongs to a such that x is strictly greater than c x is strictly greater than c then strictly greater than c then we say that L a real number belongs to R uh, L belongs to R is a right hand limit right hand limit of the function f at the point c and we write and we write uh, which is denoted as or and is denoted y limit f x tends to c plus x tends to c plus is l is l if 
if for given f sin r greater than 0 for any for if for any f sin r greater than 0 there exists a delta there exists a delta which depends on f sin r greater than 0 such that for all for all x belongs to a and x satisfies this can end with uh, and 0 is less than x minus c less than delta that x belongs to a and as well as this condition then the mod of f x minus l is less than epsilon. So, for all x with you can write with 0 is less than than this. So, this is called the left hand limit. So, here this function is there this is our interval c infinity c is this point and then infinity here. So, we can choose here and then a intersection a is some segment. If we take the a intersection c say a is suppose somewhere here this is our a then a intersection c will be this set. So, if we picked up the point x here which are greater than c and if the functional value f x minus l lies between this interval then we say that the limit of the function f x from right hand side exists and equal to l that is we are approaching to c from the right hand side to c ok. Then second um, we define the uh, if c if c is a point in r be a cluster point or is a cluster point of the set a intersection minus infinity to c it means this is the set of those point x belongs to a where x is strictly less than c then then we say l belongs to r is a left hand limit left hand limit of f at c denoted by limit f when x tends to c minus is l. If given any f sin l greater than 0 f sin l greater than 0 there exist there exist there exist a delta greater than 0 such that for all x belongs to a with with condition is 0 less than c minus x less than delta then we have mod of f x minus l is less than epsilon. So, this is our right hand limit uh, left hand limit of this. So, we are approaching the c from the left hand side that is this is the interval c and the approach is from this side. So, when you take the x point here which approach to c from the left hand side then and if this condition holds then we say the function has a limit uh, left hand limit at the point c. Okay. So, the left hand limit and right hand limit this way we define and we have seen the example is that if we look the function sin x uh, the limit of this left hand limit comes out to be. Uh, so, example is if we take the function f x equal to signum of x and the c is a point 0 then we say the limit of the function f x that is signum of x when x tends to 0 minus is minus 1 from the left hand side while the limit of this signum of x signum s g n signum of x signum of x 
as x x tends to 0 plus 0 plus this is Weierstrass. So, this is the right hand limit, this is the left hand limit for this. Okay. Now, when we introduce the concept of the left hand or the right hand limit, we look the um, set A and intersection with the C infinity if the right hand limit or intersection with minus in, uh, infinity to C if the left hand limit. And then if the limit comes out satisfy this condition, then we say limit A. However, it is not necessary that always we will uh, have a either left hand limit or right hand limit or maybe both. It may so happen that we may not get the neither left hand limit nor the right hand limit, hence limit will not exist. Or maybe sometimes we get the left hand limit, but not the right hand limit and vice versa. Or otherwise or sometimes we can get both the limits, but the value are different. So, this is the case when both the limit exist, but they are not equal, but they are not equal. The second example if I look the function f x which is 1 by x, then what he says when c is a point 0, then we say the limit of this function x uh, 1 by x when x tends to 0 minus from the 0 it goes to minus infinity and limit of this 1 by x when x tends to 0 plus it goes to plus infinity. So, limit does not exist here of course, and they are different they divert. Third case is if we look the function f x equal to say e to the power 1 by x. Suppose, if I take this function e to the power 1 by x and then when we take the limit of this function e to the power 1 by x when x tends to 0 plus or limit of the e to the power 1 by x when x tends to 0 minus, what we will say here that when x tends to 0 plus the limit will be infinity, while in this case the limit comes out to be 0. So, left hand limit exists, but the right hand limit does not exist, comes out to be finite, it is infinity. Okay. The reason of this is, is simple, why it is so? Because if we look that any t for any t greater than 0, we have 0 less than t less than e to the power 1 by t, because the expansion of e because e to the power z or x is 1 plus z plus z square by factorial 2 and so on. So, obviously, when you write the uh, sorry this is um, not this is t I am sorry e 0 is less than equal to t less than t and this is uh, true for all t greater than 0. So, when you write t replace t by 1 by x. So, what we get is 0 less than 1 by x less than e to the power 1 by x for x greater than 0. Clear? for x greater than 0. Now, this if we take a sequence take a sequence x n say 1 by n which goes to 0. So, this x n goes to 0. So, what about this 1 uh, from here equation from 1 what we get the corresponding sequence 1 by x n which is less than e to the power 1 by x n greater than 0 will imply that 0 less than n less than e to the power n and since this tends to infinity therefore, this limit will go to infinity as n tends to infinity that is when x tends to 0 e to the power 1 by x will go to infinity. Okay. Now, on the other end on the other end if we replace in this expression if you replace x t by say minus 1 by x t by <coughs> minus 1 by x if x is negative then minus 1 by x of course, is positive okay? then we get from here is 0 less than minus 1 by x less than e to the power minus 1 by x valid for x to be negative, but this implies just a manipulation and this will give you the result 0 less than e to the power 1 by x which is less than minus x for all x negative. 
So, when x tends to 0, when x tends to uh, sorry, yeah, when x tends to 0, then what happens this? The from the left hand side, this will be 0. So, this limit comes out to be 0 because can. So, this implies limit of this e to the power 1 by x when x tends to 0 from negative side is 0. Therefore, this uh, limit is done. So, we have seen the three example one is when the left hand limit and right, right hand limit both exist, but they are different. Second case when none of the limit lies the left hand limit nor right hand limit exist it comes out to be infinity or minus infinity. While in the third case we have only the left hand limit exists, right hand limit does not exist. So, the concept of the left and right hand limit basically depends on the uh, existence of the left or right hand limit depends on the function. Okay? And when both these limit coincide, then we say the function has a limit at the point x is 0. So, that is okay. now the equivalent definition in terms of the sequences. So, this is the uh, equivalence definition equivalent definition of uh, left and right limit left oblique right hand limit of the function f x at c. This is in the form of theorem. Let A is a subset of R, let A be a subset of R and let F is a mapping from A to R and let C is an element of R be a cluster point, be a cluster point of A intersection C infinity then the following statements are equivalent. equivalent. The first statement says limit of the function f when x tends to c plus that the right hand limit of f is suppose l then it is equivalent to the second uh, statement that for every sequence x n that converges to c such that x n is in a and always x n is greater than c strict means always towards the right hand side of the c for all n for all n belongs to capital n then the sequence of its functional value that is f of x n this sequence we converge to l converges to l if this happen then we say the right hand limit of the function f is l. So, this is the equivalent definition in terms of the uh, sequences similarly similar we can write it for the left hand limit if the limit of the function f from left hand side exists means there exists a sequence x n converges such that x n is strictly less than c for all n and then f x n converges to l. In a similar way we can write it. Okay. Now, uh, next which is interesting result which we I told earlier also the relation between the this extension of the limit and the limits. What theorem says is let a is a subset of r non empty subset of r and let f is a mapping from a to r and let c be a crystal point cluster point uh, of both of these sets both of these sets uh, that is a intersection minus infinity c as well as a intersection c infinity 
these sets. Then, then limit of the function f as x tends to c exist n equal to l if and only if if and only if limit of f when x tends to c means right hand limit of f is l which is the same as the left hand limit of the function f at c. If both the limits coincide and equal to l then we say the limit of the function exists and equal to l. Okay. So, this will be the definition for this. Okay. <coughs> Then we uh, come to in final. Now here, so far we have taken only the concept of the limit when c is finite. Limiting value is finite. L is also finite. So now we will take in the case when limiting value is uh, uh, finite, but limit comes out to be infinite. So what will be the form of the definition when the limit L comes out to be infinity or minus infinity? Now, this is definition. Let A, which is a subset of R, and let F mapping from A to R, and let C belongs to R be a crystal point, be a crystal point of A. cluster point of A. Then we say F tends to, we say that F tends to infinity as X tends to C denoted by limit F when x tends to c is infinity, if for every x, if for every alpha belongs to R, there exist, there exist a delta which depends on alpha positive such that for all x belongs to A with the condition with because it is a uh, uh, lying between from both sides with x minus c 0 is less than mod x minus c less than delta in this neighborhood either from left hand side of c or right hand side from c and within the neighborhood of the delta c neighborhood of delta neighborhood of c. Then the functional value of this f x is greater than alpha. And since alpha is arbitrary, it means the value of the function f x cannot be bounded, it is unbounded. When we say the limit of the function f when x tends to c is infinite, it means when x approaches to c the function f is not bounded. This is equivalent to say is that if I choose a delta neighborhood of c, then the point in this delta neighborhood of c will exceed to any number given number alpha. And this once you decide any alpha, you can identify a delta such that when you choose the x in, in this delta neighborhood of c, then the corresponding value of the function at this point will be greater than alpha. Clear? So, that way we say the limit of the function f x when x tends to c is infinity. Similarly, we define the limit to be minus infinity as follow. If we say f is the limit of the function f when x tends to c is minus infinity means means if for every every beta belongs to r there exist there exist a delta which depends on beta positive such that for all x belongs to A with the belongs to A with 0 is less than 
mod x minus c less than delta uh, uh, we have then f of x is less than beta. So, uh, when we say the limit is minus infinity it means then x is approaching to c either from the left hand side or from the right hand side the functional f x is approaching to minus infinity that is it is unbounded towards the negative side then that is equivalent to say is that we whatever the number you pick up there will be a neighborhood around c delta neighborhood around c such that the value of the function will be still lower than the that number beta and this shows the function f x will go to minus infinity when x is sufficiently close to c. That. Now, let us say example for it. For example, the function f x which is g x uh, which is a 1 by x square sorry f x say 1 by x square. Now, if you look the limit limit of this function 1 by x square when x tends to 0. Now, what happen when x tends to 0 either from the right hand side or from the left hand side both will go to 0 what uh, x tends to 0. So, it will go to infinity. So, we claim this limit is infinite this is our claim to justify it we write like this if alpha is greater than 0 is suppose given <coughs> and let let us find delta edge 1 by root alpha. So, delta depends on alpha. Now, once it is it follows that what the delta neighborhood of this. So, delta neighborhood uh, of 0 delta neighborhood of 0 means mod of x is less than delta greater than 0. Now, then this implies that x square must be less than uh, the delta is 1 by root alpha. So, x square must be less than alpha and hence 1 by x square will be greater than alpha. No, this is 1 by alpha sorry 1 by alpha. So, it is greater than alpha it means when x is sufficiently close to 0 the value of this can exceed to any number alpha for a given alpha. So, whatever the alpha is arbitrary. So, when you choose any alpha we can find a neighborhood of 0 such that the value of this exceed by that number it shows the limit of this 1 by x square when x tends to 0 is infinity that is what it was satisfied. Another example if we take suppose I take uh, the 1 by x also we have seen that is ok. So, take the um, ok. Uh, 1 by t f x equal to 1 by x this also we have seen the limit of this when x tends to 0 from right hand side is infinity left hand side plus infinity. So, this is already done. So, need not to ok. Now, just like we have the skews theorem in case of the limit uh, similar type of result we can also have in case of the right hand or left hand limit. So, that result in the form let a which is subset of r let f and g which are the mapping from a to r a to r and let c belongs to r be a crystal point of a crystal point of a suppose that f x is less than equal to g x for all x belongs to a that is follow x belongs to a, but x is not equal to c x belongs to but x is not equal to c. Then limit of this function f x if limit of f x when x tends to c is infinity then limit of g x when x tends to c will also be infinity and b part is if the limit of g x when x tends to infinity x tends to c is minus infinity then the limit of f f 
when x tends to then limit of this x tends to c will be minus infinity. Of course, this is obviously to, um, um, one can say. So, we are just skipping the proof for it and then ok. Now, <coughs> so far uh, uh, we have taken when l is infinity is it not l is infinity and then we have chosen this part. Now, one sided limit of this uh, definition let a a belong a which is subset of r and let f f is a mapping from a to r and if c is a crystal point belongs to r be a crystal point of a of the set a intersection c infinity that is the left hand limit and right hand limit we are giving the concept here x uh, belongs to a where the x is greater than c then limit of this f when x tends to c plus is infinity means if uh, if for every for every alpha belongs to r there is a delta depending on alpha positive such that such that for all x belongs to a for all x belongs to a with 0 less than x minus c less than delta then the f of x is greater than alpha for this. So, this is the left hand concept of the limit the limit of the f from the sorry right hand side is infinity means that if I picked up a set a intersection c infinity and c is the crystal point of this set then the we say the limit of the function when c approaches towards the right hand side or right hand limit of a is infinity means that we can identify a delta corresponding to every alpha such that the f of x will exceed by alpha for all x satisfying this condition. Similarly, when it is the uh, negative side then we say simply if it is negative uh, say minus then what is changes here is the corresponding c it will be infinity c that is uh, in uh, minus infinity c and then from here minus infinity c and from here it will be just a c minus x 0 less than x less than delta then it will come to be f x less than alpha like this. So, similarly the changes will be like this accordingly we are not giving that ok. Then uh, for example, is uh, this say 1 by a in delta f x g x equal to e to the power 1 by x when x is not equal to 0. Now, this we have already seen that if we take for any delta for any point any interval 0 delta where well delta is positive <coughs> the right hand side limit of this function tends to uh, this right hand when x tends to delta right hand side tends to infinity as x tends to 0 plus and this limit goes to 0 as x tends to 0 minus this we have already discussed it limited ok. Now, next concept when c one of uh, the limiting point c is not finite if it is infinity then also we can define the limit as follows. So, limit at infinity we can say the limit at infinity concept limit at infinity limits at infinity ok. When we have the limiting point c is infinity we define h follows 
let A be a subset of R, non empty subset of R, and let F is a mapping from A to R. Suppose that suppose that A infinity is contained in A for some A for some A for some A belongs to R. Suppose this uh, interval uh, then we say then uh, the limit of this f when x tends to infinity l means means that for a given f signal means for given f signal greater than 0 there exist there exist a k which depends on f signal and greater than a number this k greater than a such that for any for any x greater than k any x greater than k the uh, f of f x minus l uh, if for given f sign there exists such that for any the thing f of x minus l is less than f sign then we say the limit of this function f when x tends to infinity is l so when x is sufficiently large means at the infinity we are touching the finding the behavior of the function fx function fx what is the behavior of the function at the point at infinity this shows the limit okay uh, then plus infinity minus infinity also in a similar way we can write then another result going to let a which is subset of R and let F is a mapping from A to R and suppose and suppose that A infinity is con each a, a infinity is contained in A for some A belongs to R some A then the following statements are equivalent then following statement are equivalent the first statement says the limit of this function f when x tends to infinity is l and second statement says that for every sequence for every for every sequence x n in a intersection a infinity such that limit of x n as n tends to infinity is infinity then the sequence then the sequence f of x n converges to L. So, this is the equivalent definition in terms of the sequence. When we say limit f uh, as x tends to infinity is L, then in terms of the f signal delta definition we have taken that for a given f, uh, f signal we can identify a k such that when all x get greater than k the difference f x minus L will be small. And for a sequence, if uh, in terms of the sequence, we can say there exists a sequence x n which are uh, which are which are tending to infinity, and then the corresponding functional values will converge to L, close to L. So that is the equivalent definition for that. Okay. Now, if when both the limits plus in, uh, c is also infinity, a is also infinity, then we define the concept as follows uh, let a which is a subset of r and let f from a to r uh, suppose that suppose suppose that a 
infinity this is contained in a for some a belongs to a for some a belongs to a then we say f tends to infinity as x tends to infinity we say f tends to infinity edge x tends to infinity that is we write like this limit of f when x tends to infinity is infinity if given any alpha belongs to r there exist a k depends on alpha greater than a such that for any x <coughs> belongs to x greater than k for any x greater than k then f of x will be greater than alpha ok greater than alpha. So, this is the concept when both the means c is also infinity and l is also infinity. Similarly, we say uh, similarly if we take limit of f as x tends to say infinity is minus infinity x tends to infinity is minus infinity it means as x tends to infinity means for any alpha there exists k greater than alpha uh, alpha uh, k depend on alpha such that k alpha is greater than 1 then for any x greater than this it will show f of x is strictly less than alpha. So, that will be the criteria when x tends to infinity f is minus infinity this two. Uh, again in the sequential form we can say like this. So, equivalent concepts in the sequential criteria that is in the form of theorem. Let A belongs to R and let F is a mapping from A to R and suppose that a infinity is contained in A for some A belongs to R. Then the following statements are equivalent. Equivalent. The first statement is limit of the f as x tends to infinity is infinity and second statement says for for every sequence x n in a infinity such that limit of that sequence x n when n is sufficiently large is infinity infinity then the limit of this limit of f of x n as n tends to infinity will be infinity limit of this infinity. So, this is the equivalent concept if suppose we want that one uh, limit of this is minus infinity if the limit of f when x tends to infinity is minus infinity equivalently we can say here is for every sequence x n in a infinity such that limit of the x n is infinity then limit of this f of x n will be minus then here limit of the f of x n as n tends to infinity will be minus infinity this is the equivalent way equivalently respectively or we can say this clear. So, concept is this one. Now, one more results which will help in getting the sometimes limits. Let A which is subset of R and let 
f g are the mappings from a to r a to r and suppose and suppose that a infinity open interval a infinity is contained in a for some a belongs to r for some a belongs to r and suppose that g x is always positive for all x greater than a. So, these are the restriction we put it and that for some l and that for some l which is in a r l is not equal to 0 we have we have one we have uh, first is limit of this f x by g x when x tends to infinity is say l this can then depending on l we can identify the limit for f and g. So, first condition said if l is positive then limit of f as x tends to infinity will be is infinity if and only if limit of g as x tends to infinity is infinity. So, if l is comes out to be greater than 0 then both these function f and g when x is sufficiently large will be infinity the value will come out to be infinity and second is second is if l is negative then limit of f if this is in as x tends to infinity if this is minus infinity if and only if if and only if limit of g is plus infinity that is if l is negative <coughs> and limit of g is positive then limit of f will be minus infinity if limit of f is minus infinity then limit of g will be infinity if l is negative but if l is positive then if f is limit is infinity g will also have a limit infinity and similarly vice versa if g is as limit infinity l will also have a limit infinity the proof of this see the proof of this is very is not difficult say first given that l is positive ok so once l is positive then uh, and a belongs to this. So, let us take a 1 which is greater than a belonging to the interval 0 uh, a to infinity this interval which is such that uh, f x by g x because this limit is l. So, if I choose the epsilon edge l by 2 choose epsilon edge l by 2 then we can write this thing as f x by l is lying between 3 by 2 l greater than because f and g both are giving to be a positive g is also positive ok. So, if this we can write it f x and g x uh, is greater than half l half l and when x is sufficiently large which is positive. So, we can since l is we can suppose there is just a 1 such that this condition hold ok by g. this is our way ok such that this condition hold. Therefore, what will be so multiply by g a because g is giving to be positive. So, multiply by g x we say here is multiply by g x we get half l into g x will be less than f x will be less than 3 by 2 l into g a g x and this is true for all x greater than a 1. So, obviously, this will be true for now take the limit what is now change is if it is f is infinity then g is infinity. So, here if f is infinity g will be infinity if g is in uh, sorry if g is infinity f will be infinity 
if f is infinity from here g will be infinity. So, follows. So, result follows. Okay. So, this will be the one. Now, let us see uh, some examples based. Uh, uh, we have uh, x to the power n and other form we have already discussed that if function f x is x to the power n, uh, then limit of this function f x that is x to the power n when n tends to infinity, the limit of this uh, sorry when x tends to infinity, when x tends to plus infinity or x tends to minus infinity that way. So, if I take the x tends to minus infinity, then when n is even number this will go to plus infinity as this will go infinity if n is even because x is tending to minus infinity, but n is even. So, it will and when n is odd then this will go to minus infinity. So, we can get it. and this can be so. Similarly, if the polynomial p x is given let us say a n x to the power n a n minus 1 x n minus 1 up to say a naught. Then limit of this p x when x tends to plus infinity this will be equal to infinity if a n s are positive a n s are positive ok a n s are positive and p n will be negative minus infinity if a n s to be negative. So, this can be proved like this ok. So, in case of fraction also we can do it this way thank you. <coughs>